How do you repair damaged boat teak? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. It's about 20 degrees outside where I'm at in Michigan, so I brought some teak trim inside the house, and I'm gonna start working on that for a while. Today, what I wanna show you is Sometimes when you're restoring these old boats and they have teak wood on them, teak in particular, but they may have mahogany or something else, you will come across wood that you'd like to reuse, refurbish. But the issue is, is that maybe it's damaged, it's cracked, or a piece will crack off of it, break off of it while you're trying to remove it or sand it or something like that. And uh, the piece itself is piece of wood is pretty good shape it's just got this crack maybe even a structural crack and you want to know how to repair it how, how do you f fix something like that because let's face it teak and some of these exotic woods are quite expensive and to remake a piece of wood you know might be beyond your skill level or something you just don't want to mess with so what you want to do is you want to repair the crack and the way to do this i found is to use a little bit of epoxy now, uh, some people use glue, but I, ha I personally don't. I haven't had success with it. And uh, I find the epoxy makes the you know, repair spot stronger than even some of the wood that's around it. And this, for me, has been the go-to fix. So what I have here, this is the step for the ass cabin. And there were prior holes drilled in the teak these are the new holes i put i just put in for the hinges these are the old holes and uh well they got to be filled so i'm going to show you how i do that using epoxy and some teak dust that i have and then in one of these new holes that i drilled uh even though i pre-drilled the hole it perhaps my pre-drilled hole was not quite big enough. And what's happened is it's cracked along the grain. And I'm gonna show how to fix that. So watch, this will open up here. You see the crack? And sure enough, it cracked right along it cracked right along the grain there. And what we want to do is put a little bit of epoxy in there and then release the screw and it will close, it'll close back up and set up over time. And that's, that's a, that's the best repair that we can do on it right now. It would be a shame to have to get rid of the rest of this. It's actually in very great shape. Let me introduce you to an interesting gadget that I came across uh, when you're doing fiberglass work. Check this out. What we have here is a timer. And what this thing does is uh, it's magnetic. It sticks to, it sticks to metal, right? It's, and uh, it's a timer. It ticks real loud and it has a nice bell to it. And the, the reason I like this timer is because I frequently have a problem when I'm doing fiberglass work. I get distracted sometimes or I overwork uh, the epoxy or the fiberglass, whatever I'm working on. And uh, I overshoot, you know, the handling times for uh, some of the epoxy. Now, I'm in a northern climate, so I tend to use a fast cure hardener with the epoxy. And uh, it will kick off uh, sometimes when I'm not quite prepared or paying attention. And uh, especially if I get distracted trying to work something and make it look uh, right. Um, you know, I started using this timer on a regular basis every time I do fiberglass work, and it's really helped me kind of in my uh, fiberglass performance. I follow the specs for the West Marine epoxy, and then I set the timer accordingly. And, and if I really want to be clever, I can set it, you know, a minute or so early so that I know once that, once that bell goes off, I I'm pretty much done working, and I need to stop messing with the fiberglass or the epoxy. It's a great little gadget and I uh, found it on Amazon. It costs like 20 bucks and uh, just love it. If you like this channel and you've learned something new, do me a favor, hit the like button and click subscribe. That way you'll be sure to get all of my future videos and even some of my special ones when I stream live. Thanks again. So what I do is I mix up some epoxy and then I have some teak dust. Now I've collected this over time, sanding various pieces of teak wood and what have you. I collect up the dust afterwards and I put it in a Tupperware dish. 
And then I can use it as a little bit of a filler to mix with the epoxy and make a little bit of a paste. This crack by the screw hole, I will use just regular epoxy. I want it to be as viscous as possible. I, I don't want any type of a filler. I don't want any paste. I want it to drip down inside the crack because it's really kind of a tight space. For the screw holes that I'm repairing, that's where I'll use the teak dust mixed with epoxy. Now, the reason that I use teak dust instead of some other type of filler is that I find that it looks a little bit more natural. A repair done with teak dust and epoxy will be a little bit darker than the wood around it, especially if it's a large repair. But I think it, it looks okay. It's kind of like a scar. These two trim pieces here, are uh, pieces that go in the aft cabin in the hatchway there uh, there's a hatch that you know can close up the aft cabin and it rests against these two pieces one of them has cracked on the side and uh, it's a stress point and and uh, it's cracked from age and it needs to be repaired uh, because the piece itself is in great shape it's just got this crack the other thing I want to do is add some epoxy along the back side here. This is actually two pieces of wood. They're put together with trim nails and they hold the hatchboards in place for the aft cabin. But I want to make sure that they're really strong. So I'm going to put some epoxy in there to make them basically one piece. Okay, so here's a great example of a crack repair on a piece of teak. You, you got this piece here. It's got a pretty substantial crack that's gone through it. And what I need to do is get some epoxy down inside there and then clamp it up and let it set and cure. And now here you can see clamps are removed and you can see what it looks like before it's been sanded down. So afterwards, you can see I've sanded down the epoxy and it pretty much disappears, especially if it's a crack repair and it'll go right away. And now you have bare wood that you can go ahead and put your your favorite finish on. If the repair on the crack is done properly, well, you most likely won't even see it once it's all finished out. In my case, the finish I like to use is Sickens Cetol Marine. It's kind of like a mix between a stain and a varnish, but it's also a little bit of a wood preservative. I don't get compensated in any way for mentioning any brands or products on my YouTube channel. I have no sponsors. I get no compensation. It looks like this. It has kind of like a thicker, oily texture to it, very similar to like a heavy stain or something like that but you put it on with a brush when you start with fresh wood this is a so this is a piece of teak it's sanded down when you start with something fresh like this you start by putting down use a chip brush and you just start a, applying it on here now the first coat goes on and it's kind of a it's kind of you, you're just kind of getting it on there because you want the wood to kind of suck up this coating and the wood will drink it in and uh, you'll come back about 24 hours later it'll be dry and then uh, we do like a light sand to make sure we don't have any brush bristles or anything caught in it and uh, also sanding it down kind of smooths everything out and then we'll do another coat and we do consecutive coats over time usually about three coats is good and the last couple of coats are done with foam brushes and you just very lightly kind of put them on and and you get a, a really nice kind of finish on your teak. Now, why do we use this product instead of using like a varnish, a spar varnish or something else or oiling the teak? You know, this is a matter of personal preference. And for all the years that I've owned boats, 30 some years or more that I've been messing about with boats. I've really come to like and appreciate 
CETOL sickens Marine. And the primary reason is because for a lazy guy, this coding lasts a very long time and it holds up reasonably well in, in, in all environments. Um, there are things you can put on wood, but if you're down in Florida or a tropical environment or something like that, they simply won't last. You, you'll be redoing it every three, four, six months. But I have been able to get CETOL here to last a year, 18 months, sometimes two years, sometimes longer. And I'm going to show you what the real benefit is of this product uh, in just a second. Now, some people will say, oh, that's a real dark, muddy looking finish on your wood. It looks like a fudge bar. You know, it's not that great. But as we get on with more coats, it will get a little more glossy and it'll kind of be, have like kind of a nice gloss semi gloss finish on it and in fact there's a CETOL top coat product that's a high gloss that you can get to put on here which which I think I'm going to do because I used that previously it puts a really nice sheen on everything and makes it look real nice yeah yes of course this teak looks a little darker and uh but the trade-off that you make for it looking darker versus not having to redo it every couple of months or six months or whatever, even a year is to me is massive because uh, I hate doing woodwork. We call it bright work. I hate doing that. I, I just can't stand it. It's a waste of my time. And, uh, but I also hate having wood on my boat that looks terrible. So this is kind of like a good middle ground. This is the real reason why I use CETOL. This is the aft cabin step there's one step you step down into the cabin this is the top of it the yellow pieces of tape on here are covering up non-skid uh little pieces of white non-skid i don't want them to get this coating on there so i just kind of loosely taped them off so that i don't splatter on there <clears throat> and previously i had put cetol on here <clears throat> and what you'll see is after I put the, of course, after I put the seat on, as I've been working on the aft cabin, I decided, well, you know what? I was going to cut this off at an angle and kind of round off this corner. It used to be totally rectangle, square, rectangle. The corners are square. And I took that off and I put this on here now with a round over bit and everything. So now <clears throat> here's what I've got. I got a, I got a piece of wood. It's got seat tall already on it. It's got finish work already on it. And, but this is bare wood now. Now, if this thing had been done with, a spar varnish, you would have to sand the entire surface all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to fresh wood here, okay? And then you'd have to start the whole process again from scratch. But here's the beauty of CETOL. You can make repairs and touch-ups over time without completely sanding the object. All you have to do is lightly sand and get it down, and you can apply the new finish directly to the wood, okay? So... Just to show you, this corner, you can see how I sanded it back to the old finish. I filled in the old, the old holes from the hinges. This is opposite side. It looked exactly like this one down here, but now I've touched it up with CETOL. And already, on a first initial coat, it's looking better and it's almost seamless. The, the matching of the two finishes. It blends perfectly. Okay, and of course, as I put more coats on here, it will blend even more perfectly to the point where when I'm done, I'll pull this off. You'll never know that I spot repaired these edges. Look at that. It blends seamlessly. Now, you can't do this with varnish, spar varnish, and you won't get the same effect with teak oil, which actually oils the wood as kind of a preservative. It has a completely different finish. It looks almost bare, and uh, it... It, it doesn't hold up the same, right? And so what this means is that you spend a little bit of time in the beginning getting your initial coat onto your teak here, and you build up your coats, and then, you know, after this has been sitting out in the sun for a year, 18 months in Florida, and you're, you gotta suddenly touch everything up. You run around with some sandpaper lightly to take down the edges, and you can immediately go back and spot repair, spot touch up, anything you need 
put a very light coat back over the top of the of what was already coated and you look as good as new it is very very easy super efficient you know if you're a purist who have insists that teak look a certain way okay this is maybe not for you but if you're a regular guy and you just don't like doing woodwork but you still want your wood to look good this to me i found to be one of the best products telling you it's look at it it's seamless you can't tell where I just coated this compared to what was previously on here look at that am I right or what you can't and I'm telling you you can't do this with varnish it will peel over time and you won't have a good edge so far I've been doing a lot of composite and fiberglass work on the boat but now you can see it's time to start working on the wood and the interior and getting things ready to go back inside if you've enjoyed the show do me a favor hit the like button and please subscribe you can also help out the channel by watching the albin 27 playlist you'll see it right there just click on that and let it play it's about three and a half hours long and it'll bring you up to date on everything I've been doing so far on the boat. It will also help me work towards getting 4,000 hours for my YouTube channel. Thanks so much. We'll see you again next week.